So we're going to talk about Clark and Metcalf's Mountain of Motor Development. Um, this is one of the concepts from Chapter 1. And so what Clark and Metcalf has done is come up with a metaphor for the process of motor development. So you may be thinking, why a mountain? Well, a metaphor helps us to understand something that may be considered more complicated and complex and takes it and relates it to something that's more easy to understand. And so when we think about a mountain, we think about it's a really hard thing to climb a mountain. Really? Have you tried it before? Um, even just hiking a little bit can be get you out of breath. It's a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time. It's not something that you just wake up at the spur of the mountain of the minute and then you climb a mountain in five minutes, right? It takes a long time. Um, and just like a mountain that has peaks and valleys, motor development does too, right? So if we think about that in terms of acquisition and loss of skill, our peaks are the skills that we're the best at and our valleys may be periods of time where we're not so good at that skill. Um, it's also a sequential process. You have to go step by step, both in climbing a mountain and in developing your skills. Um, everything builds on one another, and so you can't just skip around. Um, if you don't develop your, your basic stability skills, the ability to hold yourself up and um, support your posture, then you're not going to be able to walk. If you're not able to walk, you're not going to be able to run. If you're not able to run, then the chances of you participating in most sports um, it is going to be challenging, right? And so all of those skills build on each other just the same way that climbing a mountain is a process. We have to go from one level to the next. Um, it's also dependent on the individual. So every person has their own um, set of experiences, their own natural abilities, um, and their own skill level. And so each person is going to go through um, the stages at their own pace, and they may do it a little bit differently, but they're going to go through the same pattern. And so the next thing is really talking about the pattern. Um, how, what are the steps in the development of motor skills? So the first thing is, even from before birth, in the third trimester, we start to see reflexes in the infant um, up through the first, you know, the reflexes, um, a lot of them are up through the first year, but we start to see a lot of them start to fade uh, by the first three months. And so this is really that period from the third trimester through the first three months is where all the movement that we see is really just reflexes. Um, and when we talk about reflexes, what we mean is there's a stimulus and that stimulus creates an automatic response. It's not something that I chose to do. It's just something that my body naturally took over and did. Um, and so we typically think of a reflex like your knee jerk reflex, the doctor hits your knee and you kick them in the shin. But um, we're really talking about in this chapter and what we're going to talk about in chapter nine is the infant reflexes. So the, the reflexes that are unique to um, the natural development of the baby. And then as those reflexes start to disappear, we move into the pre-adapted phase. And that's where um, we start to see voluntary movement. So movement that I chose to do and I wanted to do um, start to come into play. So that's learning to hold their head up and being able to sit up by themselves and be able to stand by themselves, um, being able to grasp an object, um, reach for objects, bring things to their mouth. Um, we see all of those things start to occur as they find shiny and pretty things that they want to play with. And the next thing, so once we get those basic postural skills down, um, then we move into the fundamental patterns. And I think it helps to think about sports skills in this phase. So just the basic acquisition of them. Um, so here's a video of my daughter when she was young and she had just learned to walk and she's really just learning the coordination. And so she walks over and she has the ball and she throws it and she's able to successfully get it in the hole, but she still looks pretty awkward and uncoordinated. And so that's what you want to kind of think about, just getting the basic pattern of movement down at this phase. And then as we start to get better at that skill, more coordinated, then we move into the context specific phase. And so this is where we start to combine movement. So we're we're running up to kick, that's all one synchronous movement, you know, and we're able to adapt that movement to changes such as, you know, being able to know 
when do I need to, to pass to this person, when to pass to that person, um, do I need to shoot with a high arch or a low arch? Um, we start to see specialization in skills. So if you think about your own history, and you'll do this in one of your labs, um, what, what would your peaks look like on your mountain? So for me, I did gymnastics when I was little, but I really stopped doing that when I started playing basketball. And my basketball peak would be, end up being a lot higher because I quit gymnastics when I was young. And so my skill didn't really develop that much, but basketball I saw all the way through high school. So I had a lot more experience and I got a lot better at that sport. So you'll see different sizes of peaks depending on the skill level um, for that area. You'll also see, you know, the height of the peak, just like I was talking about, goes more into the, the ability. So how good are they at that skill? And then at the very top level, so maybe, you know, usually you're not going to have more than one or two sports that you really get to the skillful phase or movement if you don't want to think about sports. Um, and so this is where you're able to improvise, you're more automated. So you don't have to stop and think about, you know, I, like I said about basketball, you're supposed to keep your elbow in, you're supposed to dip your fingers into a cookie jar. By the time I was a senior, I wasn't still thinking about those things, right? Because it becomes more natural. The more you do it, you don't have to think about it. Okay. And to, to reach the skillful phase, it's not going to be everyone, and it's not going to be in every skill, like I said. And so it's going to be the ones that you're really motivated to do well in, the ones that you get a lot of practice in, that you reach the skillful phase. And then the last one, this is the one that usually gets forgotten. And so we can't forget about this. This is our valleys phase. And so in compensation, you see some kind of loss in the ability. And that could be from injury. It could be um, a lot of times from aging is probably the most common thing that we think about. But it's not necessarily permanent. You know, we see, if you heard the phrase, move it or lose it. If you're not doing the skill, you're going to lose some of that ability. But if you get back up tomorrow and start doing it again, you're going to gain that back. So with aging, it's probably a little bit more permanent. There's not a lot we can do um, with the, the processes that are happening with aging. You're just going to naturally degrade your skill. But if you stay active, and we'll talk about this more later, if you stay active, you're going to retain it longer. Okay, so that's the, the, the six phases of the Mountain of Motor Development, and I hope that overview helped you to understand it better.